Meta is following in the footsteps of Twitter. They have begun launching their Meta Verified subscription, which at its core just allows people to pay for a blue check mark. And because watching Twitter roll out a similar concept felt like watching a live train wreck, I'm left with a lot of questions regarding how Meta is anticipating this rollout to go smoothly. They did initially start this beta in Australia and New Zealand, but in recent days we've started seeing it being offered to American account holders. I'm over in Canada, so it's probably not gonna reach us for like another year. I know a lot of people get really hung up about the elitism of the blue check mark, but the original concept is kind of for the greater good. <laughs> the original purpose behind the verification badge is to easily distinguish notable figures. Somebody who might be a celebrity, journalist, politician, somebody who comes up in the media a lot, to make it really easy for social media users to tell if the content posted is true and authentic to that individual. For example, it makes sense why the general public would want to know that an announcement or post was actually posted by Beyonce or an impersonator looking to scam her audience by selling fake tickets or merch. Similarly, verifying magazine editors, politicians, journalists makes sense because the content that they're putting out there can have a profound impact on the public. If they weren't, Think about how difficult it would be to fact check information or misinformation spread by people posing as them. So we can't dance around the fact that if everyone is verified, it kind of feels like nobody is. And I will note that I do appreciate that Meta is throwing in a few extra perks to their verified subscription, but the list of benefits just begs more questions. So we're gonna go through them one by one. So here is the lineup of what subscription payers will receive, all for the sweet price of $11.99 US if you're signing up on the web and $14.99 if you're signing up via iOS because Apple takes a 30% cut and poor massive meta just can't bear to separate with that money so they put the expense back on their users. Anyways, first their big selling point, a verified badge. This is where they will confirm that you are who you say you are based on your government ID. Oh, and a selfie video apparently. Like deep fakes aren't a thing. So they have said at this point that in order to be verified, your profile name has to match your government ID. And as somebody who operates under two brand names, Comfy Girl Curls and Creating With Kea, I get it, I guess, but I'm wondering, like, does that make me ineligible? Would I have to change my handle to my government name? Would I only then be able to verify one account? Like, what are the details here? And while my government name is spread all across the internet, I know that there's a lot of people who consciously do not operate under their name for privacy reasons. And these people might feel totally comfortable sharing their government ID with Meta to say, yes, this is me, this is the person behind this account, but might not be comfortable with their name being publicly accessible. And if they're going to remain firm on the government ID matching your name, I think this will then in turn force a lot of creators to rebrand as themselves when it wasn't something that they were previously wanting to do. And while I know they are really riding on the allure of the blue check mark to sell this service, I really wish that they could show that they have verified that people are real humans another way. Like another symbol or like a little piece of text somewhere. I just really don't like that we're messing with an existing system that isn't just exclusive to Meta. Every social media page at this point has a verified badge on it. And the requirements have been relatively consistent platform to platform. Like why don't we make the usernames of the people who are verified by their government ID bold? or something, or italicized. This video is just a rant and I'm sorry. So next they say more protection from impersonation. Signing up for the subscription will give you proactive account monitoring for impersonators who might target people with growing online audiences. And that's all well said and done, but it makes me wonder, is Meta not doing anything about the bot and impersonation problem unless you're paying them to. To me, that just shows that they do not care for the average users of their platforms because the true victims of account impersonators aren't actually the account holders themselves. It's their followers who are being scammed out of money or into giving up their personal information. And then help 
when you need it. So other than the blue check mark, this has been the second biggest selling feature I've seen for the subscription service because Meta has notoriously poor customer service, which I have been personally victimized by. And this is actually the only thing on the list that has made me consider paying for verification. I have previously lost access to my Facebook business page and I would pay to never go through that again. I scoured through forums, I tried everything on the Facebook help pages, and nothing worked. I actually hadn't realized up until now that Facebook had completely cut off all of its chat support features, except to some of the really big business accounts. So the moment that I heard that Meta was offering support services with this rollout, I told myself that I would be signing up that I had to, to protect my business, and that I would do so begrudgingly, grumbling about how crappy it is that Meta gets to profit from its really poor customer service. But after reading this, I have some doubts. Like, how does the support work? Because I feel like they have left this intentionally vague. Vague enough that I'm concerned. They say that they'll provide access to a real person for common account issues. So first, what are they deeming as common? Because when I lost access to my Facebook page, the problem could not be solved by any of the common or frequently asked questions on their page. And also, is this support in-app? I'm thinking that it'll probably be like an in-app chat button or something. And if that's the case, if you lose access to your account for whatever reason, how will you get into your verified account to access the support? I would like to get really clear on how you can access said help before I shell out money for it. Then they have said that buying a verified badge will get you increased visibility and reach. And all I hear is pay to play. And I don't know how much time I wanna spend on a social media platform where the content being prioritized is simply the content that people paid to have prioritized. Ugh. I don't really have a question on that one, except maybe like, why do you think the average users, the base would want that? Look at how upset everybody was about a non-chronological feed. Did we not learn from that? And finally, they have exclusive features. And my only question is like, what does that mean? Are you gonna get early access to like beta testing? If so, looking at Meta's track record of beta programs, I would not want to be a victim of that. So yeah, after digging into this more, I have been left with so many more questions and I've also been left with the feeling that this is truly just a money grab and a step towards making Instagram more of a pay to play environment than it already is, which is just going to be a detriment to an already shaky IG meta experience. What do you guys think? Let me know if you'll be getting it when it rolls out to you. I definitely do still see it as a form of insurance for your business if your business is your social media presence, but I do think the whole thing is just kind of unfortunate. Drop your thoughts below and I'll see you next time.